This is not easy, but I'm going to do it anyway. It may take me five hours, hopefully not because I have a class in a little over an hour, but I want to derive the acceleration vector, the velocity and acceleration vector in spherical coordinates. Um, so why would you want, why, who would care, why would you want to do this? Well, imagine that you have some, something that's confined to a sphere or has spherical sym symmetry. You could use Cartesian coordinates to do the problem, but it might not make the most sense. So one example would be like, if I have a pendulum, not, a normal pendulum would be like this, but if you have like a spherical pendulum, so it moves in, in like three dimensions and it doesn't really make sense from the top like that. Uh, in that case, the uh, R value, if you put the, the pivot point at the origin, then the R value wouldn't change. You'd only change in the theta and phi directions. And so you could write down Newton's second law. Uh, in spherical coordinates, that might be a little bit easier. <clears throat> so spherical coordinates uh, are a, a different way to describe uh, the location of an object. Let's say, actually, this is a Z direction. I sh shouldn't put that as dashed. Uh, so, and there is some disagreement in the way we describe this. And so I apologize right off the top. Uh, let me just do it my way. So the three coordinates that we're going to use are R, theta, and phi. Now, R is, and not everyone agrees here, okay? Um, and then you write this as rho, phi, theta, because this is the alternate option that people use. But the distance from the origin to the point, I'm going to call R. And then I'm going to call this angle between, um, this is actually, y and that's z. The angle between the z-axis and this uh, line to the point I'm going to call phi. Now some people call the distance rho and this angle theta. I don't like that. Uh, that's not the way I learned it. But if that's the way that makes you happy then you do you. Okay. You be you. Um, so just if that's the case, oh, and then if you project this thing down into the xy plane, the angle from the x-axis is theta. And let me go ahead and tell you two reasons why I like putting theta down here, even though a lot of people do put phi down here and theta up there. Okay, one, doesn't matter, it's just a name. Two, if you're in polar coordinates, then I could use that angle theta, and it's the same thing, right? Because in polar coordinates, uh, I have the xy plane, and I have r, and I have, I have the same angle theta. That's why I like it. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's get an expression for this point x, y, z in terms of r, theta, and phi. Okay, so the way I like to think about this is to first, if I take this and I project it down into the x, y plane, then this line, the length of this line, is the same as the length of this line from the point to the z axis. So this is going to be equal to sine phi. So now down here I have this is going to be r sine phi. Now I can project this onto the x plane, which it looks weird, and onto, ooh, that would actually be like that, and this onto the y plane. And so this would be, uh, this would be r sine theta times cosine sine phi times cosine theta, and this would be sine. So I get uh, the x component is going to be uh, r r, and my cap over here, gosh, r sine phi cosine theta, right, because I project down to the xy plane and then I project onto the x-axis. This is going to be that same projection r sine phi, but then I'm going to project on the y-axis, so I get sine theta. And then the z-coordinate is just a projection on the z, so it's going to be r cosine phi. So that's my relationship between x's and y's. Now, if I know my x and y values, what I want to do is to uh, let me let me just really briefly review uh, a numer a derivative in Cartesian coordinates. So, so suppose I have a position here, and this is a problem, right? Because I'm using r for the position and r for this distance, and I know that's bad, but I think we'll be okay. So if I if I say there's some position vector r equals say use it as a vector, it's going to be x, x hat, plus y, y hat, plus z, z hat. And I want to find the velocity. The velocity would just be the derivative of this, dr, dt. And that's not so bad, because I can take the derivative of x, and I get, I'm going to write this as x dot. 
x hat plus y dot y hat plus z dot z hat. So x dot is dx dt. It's a derivative with respect to time. And you'll notice I didn't take the derivative of the unit vectors because the unit vectors are constant. Now, if I write this position vector in spherical coordinates, it looks like this. R equals R, R hat, right? Because it's how far is it? And the unit vectors in, in spherical coordinates point in the direction of those coordinates, um, which we can find this in just a second. But that would be this direction. Now when I take the derivative v, it's going to be r dot r hat plus r dr hat dt. So I have to take the derivative of the unit vectors also. So here's a, a quick little demo. This is my this is my uh, my point is right there, okay. And this is the r hat vector. Let's see. Let me put it this way. Actually, that's not even. It's not even a good example because, no, it's, it's fine. Let's see, this would be, this would be theta hat. Well, anyway, so these would represent the other two unit vectors. Now, as this point moves around, you'll notice that these unit vectors change direction too. So the unit vectors are not constant. So I have to take derivatives of the unit vectors and that's tough. One way to do this is to uh, use, I can write a unit vector r hat uh, as in Cartesian coordinates. I know that seems silly. And you could do it by inspection, but in general I can say uh, r hat, the unit vector, is going to be equal to r, uh, which I need to write in spherical coordinates with Cartesian unit vectors. Um, it's going to be the partial of r with respect to r divided by the magnitude of the partial of r with respect to r, because it's in the r direction. So I can write the vector r as uh, the x component, which is just that, r sine phi cosine theta x hat plus r plus r sine phi sine theta y hat plus r cosine phi z hat. So now I have the r in terms of these non-changing Cartesian unit vectors, and I can do this. Okay, so let's do this, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll get r hat, theta hat, and phi hat in terms of Cartesian coordinates. Because once we do that, then I can take the derivative because the derivatives of the Cartesian coordinates are zero. They don't change. Okay, so let's do this one. Oh, I should, I messed up. Got to move my paper off. And I'm gonna have a lot of paper here, so uh, we'll see how how many of this takes. So let me rewrite that. Uh, R is gonna be R sine theta cosine theta x hat plus R sine I'm sorry phi sine theta y hat plus R cosine phi z hat. Now I'm going to take the partial of this with respect to r, the partial of r with respect to r, and now that's the r vector, and that's the, the variable r. Okay, so this is not too bad. If I just treat everything as a constant except r, then I have to take the derivative of this, I get sine theta, sine phi, cosine theta, x hat, and then this one, I just have an r goes away. The, derivative, the partial of r with respect to r is 1, so I get plus sine phi, cosine theta y hat uh, and then again plus cosine phi z hat. Now I need to, what I'm, that's the, that shows the direction of the change in the vector due to r. That's literally what that says. I need to normalize it. So I need to find the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of the partial of r with respect to r, because I want it to be a unit vector with the magnitude 1, is going to be equal to, now just it's a, to find the magnitude of vector, I square the components and add them together and take the square root. So it's going to be the square root of this squared, sine squared phi, cosine squared theta, plus sine squared phi, sine squared theta, plus cosine squared phi. Now, 
Uh, if I right here I can factor out a sine squared theta, so I get the square root of sine squared. I'm phi. I'm sorry, phi. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, and then I have that plus cosine squared phi. See, I got it right that time. Okay, so this is, I have cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one, and then I have sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi, which is one. So this whole thing is one. So that means that uh, that is, uh, this is my unit vector r hat. r hat is gonna be equal to sine phi cosine theta x hat plus sine phi sine theta y hat plus cosine phi z hat. And it's important, so I'm gonna put a box around that. Now I need to do the same thing for, let's do uh, theta hat next. So I need to say, what's the partial of r with respect to theta? So here's my r vector. I need to take the partial of, of this respect to theta. So I have the r, I have the sine phi, that doesn't change, and I have the cosine theta. The partial of cosine theta with respect to theta is negative sine theta. So I get negative r sine phi sine theta x hat. And then over here, I need to take the partial of sine theta with respect to theta, and that's gonna be cosine theta. So I get plus r sine phi cosine theta y hat. And then I need to take the partial of this respect to theta, and there's no theta, so that goes away. Now I need to find the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of the partial of r with respect to theta is going to be equal to, I feel like maybe I should do this in two parts, but let's just, I don't know. I think, I, I haven't decided yet. If I do it in two parts, then if I make a mistake, I can fix it, but okay. So I need to find the magnitude of this. This is going to be this squared plus that squared square rooted. So it's going to be the square root of r squared, sine phi squared, sine theta squared, plus r squared, sine phi squared, cosine squared theta. Okay, so I can factor out an r. So I get, uh, and a sine theta. So I get r, I mean sine phi, square root of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And you see that uh, that's one, so I just get this. So now that means I can uh, write theta hat as this divided by that. So you notice they both have an r sine theta term in there. So I just get minus sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. And that's my theta hat. Okay, now we need to do phi hat, new piece of paper. Let me rewrite this real quick r, r sine phi cosine theta x hat plus r sine phi sine theta y hat plus r cosine phi z hat. Okay. So now I'm going to take the partial of this with respect to phi, the partial of r with respect to phi. Okay, so there's a phi right there. So I have a sine phi. I take the derivative of that, I get cosine phi. So I'm going to get r cosine phi cosine theta x hat. <clears throat> this term has a the same thing. So I get plus r cosine phi, but now I have that sine theta y hat. And then here I have a cosine phi, so I take the derivative of that, I get negative r sine phi, I'm sorry, partial, right? That's why I don't have to deal with the, the other thing right there. Now I need to take the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of the partial of r with respect to phi is gonna be equal to the square root, this squared, so r squared, cosine squared phi, cosine squared theta, plus r squared, cosine squared phi, sine squared phi, plus, this is it's a negative times a negative, so I get plus r squared sine squared phi. Okay, so let's uh, combine some stuff here. First of all, this term and this term, I can factor out, actually every term I can factor out in r squared, so I get the r out front. 
<clears throat> this term plus this term, I can factor out the cosine squared phi. So I get the square root of cosine squared phi times this, which is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And then I have the plus sine squared phi. And you'll see what happens here <clears throat> is that this cosine theta squared plus sine squared theta is 1. And then I have cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi is 1 because that whole thing's 1. So I just get r. So that means I can write phi hat as equal to all of that divided by r. So it's going to be cosine phi cosine theta x hat plus cosine phi sine theta y hat minus sine phi z hat. Let me just check to make sure I have that right. Yes, I do. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then let me write the other two just to, so that we have them all. So I put a box around that because it's important. And then I have r hat from before is uh, sine phi cosine theta x hat plus sine phi sine theta y hat plus cosine phi z hat and then theta hat put a box everything that's good is in a box right theta hat is going to be equal to negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat box okay so <clears throat> i think what i'm going to do is stop there that's a, uh, I think the next part's going to be a little bit longer. But what I'm going to do next is take the derivative of r hat, th uh, theta hat, and phi hat. Once I know the derivatives of those with respect to time, because these can change with time. Phi and theta can change with time, but x hat cannot. So that's why we wrote it like this, because I can take these derivatives, and then I can find out the derivative of, say, r hat. So when I go back over here and I say the velocity is equal to r dot r hat plus r dr hat dt. I can take the derivative of this because when I get to the unit vectors, I know the derivatives of those respect to time are zero. And then I can get everything back into spherical coordinates. And that's what I'm going to do in the next video. And I'll see you there.